Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In this one we're going to be taking a look at getting our AI to shoot as opposed to do a melee attack. So when he gets quite close to me now you'll see that he does this line trace instead of swinging his sword and my health up there on the top left goes down. Um, we can alter the distance at which he will shoot to me by changing the acceptance radius over here. But I'll get into all of this later, I'm just going to demonstrate for now um, what we're going to be building. So you'll see now that he'll actually stop and he gets a hold of me quite a bit further away from me and keeps shooting. So he's shooting at a distance now. Um, so he can start shooting me from there. And he'll still try and keep it in my line of sight. And he'll be able to shoot at me and take my health away. He's pretty accurate, um, but you can modify this with, with the use of some random modifiers. Um, okay, so let's jump into it. So that's my development AI. So let's take a look here. First of all, let's fire up the uh, tutorial tree over here. And um, we're going to be moving on over to this attack animation tut and this move to fast tut. So inside the move to fast tut, let me just move that over there. Um, what you have is this, and this is the acceptance radius that I was just showing you. So we need to change this acceptance radius now to be something a bit bigger than 50, something like a thousand. So. This event will now basically complete whenever he's within a thousand units of us. So now we can move on to doing the attack. So inside here, quite simply, we just call attack on the AI, on the tutorial controller rather. Um, so what we're going to want to do, sorry, I just need to organize these windows a little. Um, we're going to take out the delay. Um, or This actually will be your delay between shooting. So maybe give this a half a second delay and then we'll leave that very much the same. Now let's go into this attack and you'll remember that that just calls attack. So this is the controller and this is going to call attack on the actual zombie itself. So let's go into here. Now this is where we had our sword swing. I'm just going to move these out the way. This is where we previously had our sword swinging and our... Um, and now we're taking damage of the player. But now we're going to need to go ahead and change that. So let's get rid of the animation. Or let's actually change it to a shooting animation. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. But let's put it in there anyway. So we're going to do a shooting. And then what we're going to do is move this out the way. Break this link. And we need something cool to go in here. So we're going to add a line trace by channel. Let me move that wire off my keyboard. Find trace by channel. Awesome. Now there is a tutorial on how to do this and it's done in pretty much the exact same way as in that tutorial, but I'll go through it again here. So we get the actor location. After that, we're going to break this vector. We are going to need to make a vector. So we'll drag off X over here and make vector. And we're going to link up X and Y. But the Z we're going to pull out and have an addition on him. So float plus float. And we're going to add about 60 to this. And we'll plug that back in. So we've incremented the Z axis of this vector by 60. And we're going to plug that into our start. So that's where the line trace is going to come from. Now we need to get the control rotation. And we need to get the rotation X vector off that. And from there we're going to multiply that by a value, oops, it's not by a float. I want to multiply it by a, yes, a float with a value of 2,500. And we're gonna add these two together. So vector out of vector. And then we'll plug that into the end. And for the sake of debugging, we're gonna turn this on to for duration. So we can connect our execution pin up here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna break this hit result. So we need to know what we've hit. And if the hit actor, if the cast to first person character. So if this cast succeeds, we know that we've hit the player. And if it fails, we know that we haven't. So we'll get rid of this delay. And what we'll do is if we if it does cast, we'll call take damage. Remember, we implemented this take damage um, method on the first person character in a previous tutorial. Well, now we can just plumb in any number. So let's say we want our gun to do 10 damage. We'll plug in the number 10 there. And off that, we will continue that out. 
So you also want to hook up the cast failed because if it doesn't hit the player you do still want it to go back and do these two things. It's only if you've hit the player that you want to call this take damage. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like within the game. So let's remove my development AI and let's just place one of these tutorial AI into the world. And let's see what he does there. So you see he's shooting at me now and I'm actually taking damage. My health in the top left there is going down whenever he gets a hit on me. Um, whenever he catches sight of me he's going to stop and my health will continue to go down every time he lands a hit. So he should be facing, turning to faces though which is quite perplexing. I don't remember, did the development AI do that or did the development AI stay still as well? They both seem to stay still. So we need to fix the issue of them not rotating to faces. So we'll remove that development AI from the world. And what we're going to need to do is head on back into where we were doing the um, line trace by channel. So this is our zombie. So what we probably want to do is set the actor rotation. So what we can do is we can bump this in up here. So to organize this a bit more, let's move all of this out the way a bit. Let's move these guys over. Oops. Not having a good time this morning. Um, so we're going to set the actor rotation to face us. This is experimental. I wasn't planning on on doing this, but we'll uh, we'll give it a go. And his new rotation will be the rotation of the controller. So let's give that a look and not close the game. Let's see. Does he stop and face me now? He does. So his actor rotation now matches the rotation of the controller, so he'll now face me when he's shooting me. You like say he's not playing any shooting animation, but I wasn't expecting to get that working. Um, it's quite strange really, but we could always just take that out and see what happens. So I'm sure that there's a way to play the animation there while, um, while he's shooting, but animation has never been my strong point, and I'm not going to profess to know how to get smooth animations working. Um, but basically that's how you're going to get him to use a line trace by channel to implement his damage and like I said earlier on the um, on the move to you can change this acceptance radius here and that will allow you to determine how close he has to be before he can uh, shoot at you. Um, in terms of adding some variation because at the minute his hits let's just take another look if I move side to side he will still pretty much always hit me. This guy is very accurate. So we're going to want to add some kind of variation to that. So in here where we're going to the end, on this rotation vector, we sort of need to sway him off a bit, if that, if you, if you understand what I mean. So I'm going to break this rotation and I'm going to make a rotator as well. And what I'm going to do on the... Uh, let me think, roll is like rotating left to right, pitch is up and down, and yaw is rotating on a Okay, so it's the yaw. The yaw is what I want to use. So I'm, on the yaw, I'm going to add um, a random float. So random float in range. And we're going to add between I don't know, 20, negative 20 and plus 20. Let's give this a go. And this should hopefully add some variation to his shot. So if I stand still, we should hopefully see that his hits are a little bit more. So maybe 20 was a bit too much, but you see how he's now adding and subtracting a little bit and taking too much off. So we're going to bring that 20 down to, I don't know, let's just half it for now. Let's do 10 and 10. So now his variation should be on a tighter angle. So this AI is now better. Yes, there we go. You see how some of them miss now and some of them hit? So we've added a bit of variation there to the way he shoots to make him a little bit less accurate. In fact, if you want to make it even more realistic, you can always take this and do it again on um, something like the pitch. So now that his heights are at different um, heights as well. In fact, I'm sure I could just plug that into there, clean up my code a little bit. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you see some of his shots are now too high, some are too low, some are too far off to the left. Since we're affecting two different um, planes of rotation, it might be a good idea to bring this variation down. Because over one plane of 
rotation. This is quite complicated now. Over one plane of rotation, um, there's still uh, a point where you can hit us, but over two, that point becomes smaller. So we should also decrease the variation in order to make him a little bit more likely. So you see those shots are now pretty damn close to where I am. You know, they're sort of just scraping me. Some of them are flying by. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. We have our AI facing us. We have our AI shooting. He's not the most accurate, but he's, he's pretty close. And there you have it. That's how you would get your AI to shoot using a line trace by channel. So guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. Uh, hop on the Discord server if you haven't already. There's plenty of people talking on there. It's a really great place to get help for your, uh, your own little projects, to discuss new video ideas and what you want to see from the channel, and to just get to know the, your fellow game developers a bit more. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do that. Give the video a thumbs up. And as always, guys, I will see you on the next video.